Good morning. Uh, my task here today is to tell you something about the ways in which my own experience in this church connects to the theme of this year's campaign for the annual fund. A younger Tommy would have found this task daunting. Because the truth is I've always been a little bit self-conscious about the ease with which I've carried on through my spiritual life. My childhood was neither abusive nor lacking in love. I went to church regularly in a small town in Vermont full of regular people doing regular things with regularity. I've traveled through my adult life completely secure in the love of my, of my wife, my children, and my close family. The Holy Spirit, as it turns out, can take up residence with little trouble in the soul of a person who's been lucky enough to know what it's like to have unconditional love and forgiveness and generosity. Nor have my spiritual or Christian journeys been marked by moments of profound revelation. Many times I've wished that I might have some moment of cosmic clarity in my relationship to the triune God that is something like, anything like, Moses at the bush or Saul on the road to Damascus or the disciples on the road to Emmaus but it just doesn't happen. It never comes. And the interesting point here is that I've kind of stopped hoping for it. I'm not sure I want or need a jarring, more literal come to Jesus moment in my life. And the reason for this is that SPC has taught me things. The younger Tommy bobbed along through his life in this church, perfectly happy to teach Sunday school to little kids, not really appreciating the fact that after I'd been away from church for some years, by teaching them, I was reteaching myself an ethical vocabulary that I could incorporate into my own adult life. I was totally inhibited serving on session for the first time in my early 30s, convinced that I was a young pretender among the real pillars of this church, not understanding that the pillars metaphor is a fiction and that lay leadership in a Presbyterian church is more like a web of the willing and that just by being earnest and willing, perhaps I was answering some call. My experience in worship here has been nothing like wild epiphanies or eye-opening encounters with revealed truth. Rather, it's been chock full of more subtle moments of challenge, growth, and appreciation. At first coming to peace with an image of God that's nothing like an old man in the sky, and then later finding that I feel God move me most in worship when I struggle to reconcile scripture's contradictions, when I balk at Old Testament prescriptions that I could never possibly condone. And when I amuse myself with little thought experiments like this one, what would Christian theology look like today if the book of Revelation was not accepted as part of the canon of the New Testament when those North African bishops met a couple of centuries after Jesus' death? Might we be a little bit better off? In this church, you see, I find certainty in God's love and Christ's salvation and joyful fidelity to the norms of our denomination. But these convictions live alongside an appreciation of questioning, interpretation, and nuance. I've come to learn how working with others of you to spread God's love among strangers is the time that I'm at my best as a Christian whether it's by serving communion at an elder care facility with my wife when she was a deacon or through a contribution of home goods to a refugee family we're hosting or through physical labor in Appalachia with a bunch of high school kids and Doug Harnsberger. In these moments when I trade in my own narrow self-interest for God's encompassing love through service, I'm pretty much full to overflowing and I don't know why I don't do that stuff more often. In all of these ways over the years, this church has crept up on me, revealing God's love to me, always there, patiently inviting me to service. I just don't want to live in a world without SPC and institutions like SPC that embody that kind of love. It falls to us to make our church even stronger, and our tithes and pledges help to make that happen.